PD, yeah. I have a question around parenting. All right. What many women say to me is that even for their pastor husbands, HOD husbands, and spiritual men who lead, you know, in their, in their local assemblies, so vibrant, okay. sort of struggle to spiritually lead their wives as well as their children. So you have wives who say things like, even though this guy takes Bible study or is head of prayer, we haven't prayed together in years. We don't have a systematic structure around consistently studying the word, growing together. So you have many couples who maybe experience fantastic emotional connection, but are not spiritually intimate. So you could hear the husband going on a doctrinal path that the wife is unaware of. Mm. And then they start to have children. It's the wife who is having these devotionals during the weekend. And I feel like it's partly cultural conditioning because in our parents' time, maybe women took the role a lot more in terms of spiritually leading the family. I don't know why this is so, sir. And I want to know from your own experience, your own journey. Well, we, like, I deliberately, whenever I have a revelation or a new person I'm listening to, maybe mm. I just discovered another ministry. Mm. The first person I tell is my wife. Yeah. And I tell her, this is the new emphasis now. This is what I'm picking. Uh, let's begin to do this together, you know, let's study this. Or if I have any revelation, mm. both uh, in terms of dreams, uh, visions, or revelation knowledge from the word, it's always the first person I call. Mm. I mean, it's as good as I'm in America and I see something in the world, I call her straight. Mm. I say, can you open this place? Look at what I just saw here, you know. So we have that. But for the children, we at some point we were doing it together, but I now told them, because I wanted them to have a personal relationship with the Lord. Mm. So if I, as matter of fact, I was still talking about it the day before yesterday. So I told them they should be having their own devotions. Together. Together. Wow. So that would, um, you know. So we, we, we are connected spiritually. We might not pray together every time. Mm. But once in a while, we try to do that. And the reason is that we run to different schedules. schedules. Okay. I'm always the last person to sleep in this house. And... The last two weeks. The last two weeks of also. <laughs> I usually sleep between 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. every day. Wow. I, I have never gone to bed, I don't think, in the last, how many years now, 15 years. Maybe those early years, I've been to bed, I've gone to bed before 1 a.m. Wow. So of late, it's been between 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. At times 5 a.m., at times 6 a.m. So while they are waking up, I'm sleeping. While they are starting. sleeping, mm. I'm in the study. So I do my own praying. I do. And my wife knows once we need her to pray about anything, I call her. Mm. Anytime we need to pray together. So we encourage the children. We even bought devotionals for them. And from time to time, as we have the opportunity, we sit with them and ask them questions, you know, true things. They don't really know what is going on in their lives up until asking them about. I, 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 there are guys now with toasting them. Mm -hmm. I saying, you know, these are conversations parents find difficult to yes. have. Yes. So, I mean, we bought phones for them. We also ask them from time to time, who are you talking to? You know, what's going on? And Tolu we anyway, had to tell her that, look, you are, you are God's factor in the relationship and you should be the conscience because she's a natural leader. Mm. So made her to understand. So significantly, the spiritual connection mm. with the whole family and we let them know as well with my wife and I, any new revelation, emphasis, man of God, any word, she's usually the first person to hear. Right? Can I comment on this? On our heart. Okay. I, I would like to comment on, you know, the parenting question. Uh, like you rightly said, uh, we, at times, initially, I used to feel odd because we don't run that Christian I don't want to say Christian family. It's, we're, we're a Christian family. Family but, altar. You know, the, yeah. Family altar. Morning, yeah, devotion, evening. 5 a.m. And I tried making it happen, but I realized I was doing it in the flesh. Mm. You know, and I realized that I was trying to put him in a box. Mm. Because like he said, our schedules are very different. So what I have done, and amazingly, he has his moment with his children. Mm. He has a unique connection with his girls that at times I get jealous mm -hmm. because they just have a way around him. He knows how to corner them to his office and they have conversations. conversations. What was going on? Was, the other time we traveled, 
and myself and the girls went to another part of the con uh, city and he was with Tolua Day. You know, they were together for about three days and we wow. came back and they were all about, oh, we had guy time, we're bonding, we're praying. I said, ah, you, were... <laughs> you know, and so they had that connection. Mm. Now, what I try to do is, for me as a mother, um, I, I didn't want to be legalistic about mm. praying okay, and about now. raising my children. Because I, number one, it's enough for them to know they are pastor's kids. That's enough alone, is enough pressure. And I didn't want them living like they had to mm. meet no. up a particular standard, standard. because they're mm. pastor's kids. No, I, oh, we always tell them that you are firstly gods. Wow. And you have to chart your own life. We will do our bit as every other parent, not because we're parents, mm, and we're pastors. We're pastors, pastors yeah. to guide you. So um, in the mornings, someone asked me recently on Baby Define, I said, in the mornings, we do our devotion in the car on our way to school. To school. So we take turns to pray. They have their confession. They say their confession, and then they go to school. I said, another thing I do is I, take, I seize opportunities. Wow. So when things are happening around, we're watching a movie, we're driving to the mall, Tony Mani raises a conversation about a friend in school. It's an opportunity. Mm. I link it to the scripture. I ask them, what do you think? Don't you think this is what God was saying here? How do you look wow. at it this way? I, and I had conversations with them a lot. So it is in our conversations that I pick up lessons. So I might not really have that sit down, open the Bible. I do that during the holidays. I go into the Saturday, most times Saturday, we sit down together. I say, okay, we're going to look at the book of Esther today. And then they all contribute and all of that. Another thing I do always is on midweek, uh, the midweek services, we go to service together. They're usually with us in the, in the big church. So on our way back, they ride with me. I mm. say, so what did what you, you learn? pick? What stood out for you? What made sense? Look, when I say, I don't understand what my daddy was saying. Well, when I might say, no, this was what he was saying. And I try to break it down in their own language. On Sundays too, what did you do in Sunday school today? Who taught you? So that happens all the time, you know. So I have that with them, and we tend to just, you know, keep that spiritual. And of course, he, their father has a habit. We're traveling, we pray together. We mm. come back from a trip, we pray together. Mm. We get to where we are going to, the first thing we do is we pray together. Mm. They see us praying together, they mm. see me praying. So it's not like they- Modeling. Yes. Mm. So good. Yes. And they ah, so them good. To ask us questions. Mm. You don't understand something. The best thing you can do as a parent is to be able to bring your child to the place where they can descend between good and evil. Wow. Not that you continually choose good for them. Wow. They should be able to discern between what is good and what is evil. I tell people that I don't check my children's phones religiously, really like some parents do. And the, what the covenant we have with them, the girls, is. You're matured, you're old. You're old enough to be able to manage your phones. Now, if you breach the trust, wow. I'll take it. We, we are telling you that we trust you enough. I don't ever want to pick up your phone and find a conversation that is not meant to be there. Wow. So I give them that latitude. You don't see me sneak and carry their phone kilo two. So what is she? Who is she? Wow. But a few times I can say, randomly, yes. Let me see your phone. And I must say that they haven't disappointed me. Thank um, you, God. You know. So parenting is, is, is unique. You need to really get your own blueprint. Because yeah. mm. yeah. like yeah. I said, initially I was feeling like, ah, we're supposed to be doing the Because I've yeah. seen families mm. that the children rebelled because of early money devotion. Yeah. Wow. It didn't just make sense to them. And the father was more or less like forcing, forcing it on them. And that was how they started eating Christianity. So the moment they, the moment they got out of the environment and went it's to just That was it. So like she said, parental blueprints must be gotten from God. Mm. It, it doesn't have to be we're praying together every morning, we're praying together every night, good as that can be. But the realities of today possibly will not allow that in some circumstances. But you now need to find your own rhythm. Recalibrate. And it's only the Holy Spirit that can, you know, because there are some moments spent together they are more loaded yeah. than yeah. defined. Yeah, yeah. Than, than one prayer. year of yeah. praying together. Yes. Yeah. Very true. So the Holy Spirit is the one that can look at the uniqueness of a family and tell you how to go about it. There was something mm. your mom said at the meeting about, you said about her, how she would come into the room. I smart because I do that. 
a lot for my children. Yeah. I just walk into their room, maybe right. I woke up or I went to bed late and I just lay my hand to them. I did it recently. I didn't know what Lokwe was awake. <laughs> and so she turned and then in the morning she was like, Mommy, you scared me. What were you doing? <laughs> that she thought I wanted to strangle her. I said, Why would I want to strangle you? I was praying. She said, why were you praying? I said, she's praying. I was just praying into your spirit man because I feel your spirit man is it's alert. Most alert. To receive whatever yes. prayers, you know, I need to. I do that from mm. time to time. Mm. In the middle of the night, I just go lay my hands on them and I pray. Mm. I really want to thank you. I have just two more questions, thank but you. I feel like this is almost better than reading a whole book about my <laughs>